Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the pec major, pec minor, and some of the neck muscles. So let's get started and jump right on in. The pec major is, remember, originates in the medial third of the clavicle, the sternal, and some of the costal, some of the ribs. So it originates, remember, always in the medial part and then it goes to the humerus. Here's the attachment. And I've already done some skin rolling, you know, before I started. So this muscle sometimes gets injured like with a bench press. This is more like athletes get injured. So you wanna make sure and address it. Remember, address the origins. And this is nice that, you know, that I have a male client. If you have a female client, you would roll up the sheet go ahead and show you guys that you would really roll up the sheet and cover them and go in between the rib cage right here right down the sternum and you would obviously ask you know let them know and ask permission that you can go on the sternal side and try to get as much as you can of the attachment of the origin and you would go right here under the clavicle you also get the subclavius muscle while you're here so you wanna go and do with one inch uh, strips and just with your fingertips. And for the purpose of having a male here, I wanna show you, remember that the pec major makes the fold of the axilla right here. So you, want, you can go ahead and just grasp it and really work it out all the way through. You can go with the fibers, you can go cross fiber, You can get down because it's all the way down here where it originates. So make sure that you're getting every part of the pack. And it forms the axilla. Just like the lat forms the posterior axilla, the pec major forms the anterior axilla. And I can really feel the end of his pec here and I can go underneath. I can also go underneath just with my fingertips. Go underneath the pec major and make sure you work the insertion a lot of times this is really tight and tender so you want to make sure and work all of the insertion here on this part of the humerus okay you can do some uh, from the bottom to the top some effleurage some petrissage and some very detailed work a lot of times clients have complained that they, they think they're having angina, which is a pain in the chest. And a lot of times it's not the heart, especially if it's on the right side. It is just really a trigger point in the pack. So you wanna make sure and address that trigger point. You can uh, put a little bit of pressure. Remember, you can hold it up to about 20 seconds, but no more than 20. And just work out that pressure point or trigger point if they, if they have one. This is also very good to work on uh, women that have had mastectomies. The whole breast is removed and then the pec is left and it's so damaged. It's so sensitive too. So it's very good to work on women after they've had a mastectomy to really work the pec major and be very gentle and easy because it is really sunken in and the muscle has just really been tra traumatized and it's a very traumatic. So you wanna make sure and work this muscle really good from origin, belly, to insertion. Now I'm gonna to go to that side. Okay, so now we are on the pec minor. And the pec minor is also known as the nerve entrapper because it entraps some of the uh, nerves that come from the plexus on the neck and it, it presses on them. So this originates from the third, fourth, and fifth rib. You can see it's got three origins right here, and it inserts on the coracoid process of the scapula. I can feel the little bony part right here. This is the scapula. So these are the origins and the insertion. So you wanna make sure and go all, work, like I said, one inch strips all the way up on the pec minor, which is also known as the nerve entrapper. So a lot of times you need to go underneath the pec major to get to the origins. 
You can try to lift it up. And for sure, you want to get the insertion right here. You can get on this side too and do one inch strips with your thumbs. You can use your whole flat part of your knuckles. You can also use your flat part of your, of your palms. And here you can also pinch, grab, grasp the peg major. And now for the neck, guys. This is like the most important. I know that some of you have requested to do work on the neck, so I'm gonna show you some uh, techniques for the neck. And so this one's for you, Alexandra. Thank you for requesting that, because I love neck work. So I'm gonna start on the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The sternocleidomastoid, it is the longest spelling muscle. So it originates at the sternum right here. And the clavicle, it's got two origins, the sternal attachment, the cla clavicular, and then it inserts right at the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And this is actually a very wide, strong muscle. It is one of the neck muscles, or the only neck muscle, that does not originate or attach to any of the cervicals, only the sternal, clavicular, and mastoid process. So you want to turn the head ipsilateral, which means to one side, in order to treat it, okay? This is a very delicate area, obviously, because we have the nerves that go through here. This is the little triangle that is formed between the uh, SEM and the trapezius. Here's where the trapezius ends and where the sternocleidomastoid ends. So this little triangle is filled with nerves. There's five nerves, it's, it's a nerve plexus that goes through here, and this is where uh, a lot of it contributes to thoracic outlet syndrome. I'll talk more about that when we get to the scalenes. So let me see, Leo, can you kind of flex your neck and lift it up a little bit? If you can see right here, this is, it really shows, you can ask your client, if you're not sure where it's at, ask your client to flex their head, okay, relax, flex their head so that it can really show you want to turn the head ipsilateral, that means to the side. That way you hide the carotid artery, the jugular vein, and all the nerves that, that are right there. You want to hide that part. So what you're going to do is you're going to start at the attachment. Okay, the origin right here on the sternum, the sternal notch, and the clavicular, the medial third of the clavicle. So you want to make sure and work the origins. So the origin, the belly, and then the insertion right here on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. You can really feel the bone there. So you can do circular motion. And if you are gonna work on the belly of the muscle, you turn the head ipsilateral and just you're right on that muscle. Turning the head ipsilateral towards the side that you're working on, hides the carotid artery, the jugular vein, and the plexus of nerves that is right there in that triangle. This muscle gets real damaged when people get in a car accident like whiplash. This is one of the main ones that gets injured. So you wanna make sure and work the origin, insertion, and the belly. And to do the belly, you do the money sign very carefully. Make sure you're on the muscle. If you feel a pulse, you stay off of it. Torticollis is also another um, injury that happens when you sleep wrong on your bed and you wake up with your neck all hurting. This is a very important muscle to work out. But make sure that the head is turned ipsy lateral to the side to hide all the major uh, artery and vein and uh, nerves that go right through there. So this is the way that you can treat the SEM from origin to insertion and make sure that you're only grasping the SEM. 
I'm on the belly, and you can usually find trigger points right here on the middle of the belly, especially if they've been in a car accident. So now we're gonna talk about the scathings. These are very important muscles. It's a group of three. So you've got the anterior scalenes, the middle scalenes, and the posterior scalenes. And uh, as you can see, they come out, well, the anterior is from the cervical three, four, and five, and it inserts on the first rib. So the reason we didn't draw it through here because the clavicle is right here. So it goes underneath the clavicle and inserts on the first rib. The middle uh, scaling starts from uh, C2, C3, 4, 5, 6, and all the way down under the clavicle and also inserts on the first rib. Now the posterior is only from C6, C7, and it inserts underneath on the second rib. So it's, it's on the second rib. And these muscles are the ones that help when you're breathing because they raise they raise up the thorax when you're breathing, so they assist in breathing. But as you can see, they're right in that triangle where you have the nerves. Uh, we have five nerves that come through here, the brachial plexus, and it's a muscular cutaneous nerve, the radial nerve, the uh, ulnar nerve, the, uh, what am I missing? Median nerve and the axillary nerve. So all of these can get pinched here if these muscles are tight. So. In, However, we've been told never to massage here. So what I do is I go to the origins, and in order to get to the origins, now you can go lightly on them. You can, the trapezius ends right here. I can see and feel his trapezius. So remember that the scalings are between the uh, border of the trapezius and the border of the sternocleidomastoid. So it's in this little triangle. A way that you can work on these is you, again, you turn the head ipsilateral to hide all the, the major artery and veins and the nerves. So the head is ipsilateral and I'm going underneath, as you can see, I am going to these origins, underneath the SCM. I'm pushing the SCM out of the way and very gently with pressure of one or two fingers, maybe the pressure of having a nickel on your neck, not more than that. You don't wanna do damage. So you go underneath the SCM and get to the origin on C3, four, and five. And on this side, I'm bracing the other side of the neck so it doesn't move. So I'm going underneath the SCM. Now I'm going to the medial one underneath. And this one's a little, originates a little higher on C2. So it's a little higher. And remember, if you feel a pulse, what do you do? Stay off of it. If you feel a pulse, you get off of it because that means you're on a vein or I mean, on an artery. Very gentle work. C3. Four, five, you know what? I'm not able to get too much to C6 and C7, but you get the idea here that you kind of go underneath the SEM. Now for the posterior, this is actually, I get this better when you're on the sideline position. So I'll show you guys right now. You don't want to do too much work here. However, you might want to do some work right here along the clavicle where it starts going in underneath. And this is all I'm doing with my thumb, just going underneath. Because a lot of times these muscles are just really tight from the origin to insertion. And you just need a little bit of back and forth motion here, cross friction. I can feel his posterior SEM right there. You can use fingers, just not too much pressure, just to kind of start relaxing them before we turn him sideline. Because when you get to the sideline position, it is, you know, a little bit easier to access these muscles. So I'm going to mention to you the 26 muscles of the anterior neck. There's 13 on one side and 13 on this side. Three of them are the scalenes. One of them is the sternocleidomastoid. The platysma is also considered because it pulls down your neck. So every time you go like this, 
it pulls down on your neck this is the platysma all right here the digastric the omohyoid sternohyoid uh, sternothyroid mylohyoid stylohyoid geniohyoid and thyrohyoid so there's there's 13 on each side so i'm addressing the major ones that could entrap remember the pec minor and is also known as the nerve entrapper and so are the scalenes these are the major ones that trap the uh, brachial plexus And as you well remember from the other videos that you've got to make sure that his spine is straight from, you know, C1 to C7 and T1 to T12 and from the lumbar area down. I have a pillow between his knees and uh, the bolster supporting his neck. I want to show you some work here on the scalenes, which is like one of the most important muscles right here through a three. And uh, the sideline position, you can really get to these muscles. Remember, you're working underneath the SCM, and you can really get to the mastoid attachment here. The splenius uh, capitis also attaches right here on the mastoid process. So you can start here. You can see the origins really well. You can do one-inch strips here. You can feel the trap. You can use your, the flat part of your hand. And to get to the scalenes, again, go underneath the SEM and, and all the muscles fall down towards the table. Gravity kind of pulls it a little bit and you can get underneath and get to these origins here. And like I said, I'm only really actually using these two, mainly this index finger to go underneath and feel the transverse processes. You don't want to use too much pressure. And you can really get to the uh, posterior one here through this sideline position. And you want to get all the insertions underneath the clavicle on the first rib right here. And this will be on the second rib. The one that's the trickiest to get to is really the posterior. You can actually feel the anterior. Like, take a deep breath, Leo. You, you should be able to feel. Okay, exhale. You, sh you can feel the uh, anterior one, how it raises up a little bit. The posterior one is a little trickier to, to feel, to palpate. However, you know, you can just work right here where the trapezius ends. This is where the trapezius ends. So it's right next to it, it's deep to that. So you can use your fingers or you can use your knuckles and avoiding putting pressure in this little triangle as you can see the triangle right here. You don't put too much pressure there. Another thing that you can do is you can ask your client to bring out the, uh, the other arm and hold this arm just like that and you can really get underneath here. It kind of brings the arm out a little bit. Let's see. And you can come from the back. Just really get to these insertions underneath the clavicle. And sometimes I use my knuckle and just push forward. Remember your shoulders need to be down. You don't want to do this because that really hurts you. So. You gotta watch your body mechanics again. And from this angle, you can also go up to the mastoid, right here where you have all these insertions. So you can go from this side or from this side, depending which side you are on and what you're trying to do. But this is another way to really get to the scalings. Very gentle, very little pressure right here on the scalings anterior, medial, and posterior, which is the most difficult one to get to. So now we've turned our client prone, and I've already done a little bit of skin rolling, and 
warmed up his muscles, but I want to talk about two of the major neck extensors in the back of the neck, like the sternocleidomastoid is a flexor and rotates, helps with rotation and with lateral flexion. Well, the splenius capitis, which I'm kind of faded here a little bit, but the splenius capitis originates from C7 to T4, and it inserts also at the mastoid process, right? The same as the uh, SCM. And it mirrors the SCM. So we have the SCM right here, and then the splenius capitis in the back that helps us uh, neck extension. So you want to make sure and get the origins right here. You remember the C7 is the more prominent. So you get the origins right here. And it's a little bit wider actually. You have it on both sides. We just drew it on one side. You can use your knuckles here. And remember you also have the levator scapula on the anterior part of the scapula. If you go underneath, all I'm doing is just palpating underneath and maybe even pinching, maybe even doing the money sign underneath so you can really get the posterior neck muscle and you can go one inch strips all the way across the occiput you have the suboccipitals and the splenius capitis helps bend your head back you can do your one inch strips right here you're getting the erectors you also have the spinalis, the longissimus. All of these muscles are right here on the posterior neck. So you, in order to do some specific work, you can even do some from this side. This is all I'm doing is just stepping back. And with this part, the thinner part of my hand, I'm just going up all the way up to the occiput. So you can do stuff even from the opposite side. You can do some of these moves. So you can get to all these origins here. You can use your knuckles. You can get the upper trap and the splenius capitis for sure. To do more specific work, you can really just get in there with your fingers. I'm just using the tips of two of my fingers here. My elbow is getting very close to the transverse processes, but I am not on the spinous processes. Okay, so now we're on the splenia services and where the uh, capitis ends, right at T4, this one starts at T3, 4, 5, and 6, and it uh, inserts on the cervical 1, 2, and 3. So this one doesn't go to the mastoid process like the capitis does. This goes to the cervical, one, two, and three. And it originates, it's a little thinner, but it's also very, very important for uh, neck extension. So the splenius capitis and the splenius cervices are you know, extremely important for neck extension. So imagine people that are always on a computer, are always reading. Their SCM and all the anterior muscles are so contracted and then the two back ones or the back ones, the posterior ones are hyperextending. So a lot of times they have neck issues, you know, starting from this area here. So you really want to make sure and get the splenius capitis and services right here. Go one inch strips at the insertions. And if you want to get to the C1, just use one little to the transverse processes, just with one or, or two fingers one finger or two fingers to really feel for those insertions. And you've got the levator that elevates your scapula. So you want to go ahead and just go on the anterior part of the scapula, the medial part, and you can find the levator right there in the upper trap. So while you're here, you want to work all these muscles while you're here. You don't want to just we just showed you these two muscles and we drew them, but I'm the type that no matter, like I tell my students, fake it till you make it, you just go ahead and work everything out. Don't just single one muscle out, you know, just work on all of them while you're here. You know, you have access to the whole neck, so you can work on everything. Origins, like I said, with this one, I'm working the spinalis too. Really close to the spine.
and I'm working right here on the mastoid process so I'm getting the uh, insertion of the SEM and also of the splenius capitis remember the splenius capitis inserts in the same uh, in the same place as the SEM and it's a mirror image of the SEM they're both the same so what you have here in the front you have on the on, on the back and I recommend that you guys take some uh, medical massage classes or some neuromuscular classes to really help you understand and how to work the neck. So there you have it, neck muscles. Most of the neck muscles anyway, there's, like I said, there's so many of them that it's impossible to get them all in. I think the thing that I would want to remember from this is that anterior neck work is very delicate and you don't want to go deep okay guys well i hope that this gives you some new techniques to work on the neck to go try out and the pecs so stay tuned for our next video subscribe and give us a like follow me on instagram for amp reviews and uh, check out my website for any products or classes that you might want to check out till the next time create a good day what I do is I like to use them on the back and I pump it three times and I don't even have to take it off, unplug it. I can just move it around and it really works on the superficial fascia. It, go, it warms it up, it creates vasodilation and see I can incorporate this into my massage and just make it like a few minutes routine.